Hi, this is Tom, Junkie XL, and welcome to Studio Time with Junkie XL. Uh, so last week we built some basic patches and we experimented with wave shaping and with mixing and with multiples and with triggers and with gates and with envelopes. This week I want to talk about a different type of sequencer. Uh, so if we come back here, um, Cubase is running. I talked about how um, this modular rack is now syncing in tempo with uh, what uh, Cubase is set to. Um, so we used last week this trigger sequencer of Moon, which is just giving triggers. What we didn't do last week is actually sending note information to the, um, to the oscillator. And note information in the modular world is basically, again, voltage. Everything is voltage. There's no such thing as a C or a D or a G. Everything is a voltage that needs to go to the oscillator and then the oscillator will know what note to produce or what tone to produce. So that's what I want to focus on uh, this week. Um, so um, let's grab some cables <coughs> and we're gonna <coughs> select an oscillator. Uh, last week I showed you uh, the COBOL uh, oscillator. So um, we didn't end up using it, we used a different one. So let's now take this oscillator and I'm gonna stick that here into my mixer. Um, and the output of that mixer with a short cable is going um, into this multiple that we had set up also last week, which allows us to hear the oscillator. And I'm just looking at the meter. Yeah, it's coming in on both channels at the same time. Beautiful, because that's what we want. Okay, let's now go back to the oscillator. One of the things I showed you last week is that it has that really nice quality of um, going back and forth uh, between all these different um, uh, waveforms. And so we'll just leave this as this is. We're just gonna double check again by sticking it into the tuner. Is this the note we actually want? And this is perfectly a C, almost perfect. But I'm for the purpose of this tutorial, it's perfect. So now let's go over here and let's look at our sequencers. So I have two sequencers that I want to focus on um, for this tutorial. Uh, one is um, synthesizers.com. This is like um, basically a copy of what the original Moog synthesizer used to be. It's a really great synthesizer. It's very simple in setup. <clears throat> basically you have eight steps and you can switch it um, uh, with um, a trickery system into uh, 12 steps or into whatever whatever amount of steps that you uh, that you want but let's just focus on the eight steps at this point and you see all these knobs here so these knobs will send voltage to the oscillator so I'm just going to set them all right in the middle and here we see our output and let's just take an output of that sequencer and let's just stick it into here. <clears throat> you see here it says keyboard control voltage in. Basically that's the voltage that this, the, the oscillator wants to get in order to play tones. So you see right now it starts playing a different tone and why is that? Well, if nothing is connected to the oscillator, it will play the, tu the tone that we just tuned it to. But if we stick it in here, this oscillator is now spitting out voltage to that oscillator and therefore it starts tuning. So let's say if we set it to zero. Ah, there we go. So it's not, not spitting out any voltage at this point, a little bit, but we'll, we'll fix that later. So, set this right there. So now if I start turning the knobs,
Now one thing you might notice at this point is that these notes sound out of tune. It doesn't sound like, oh, this, this is like perfectly in tune, like it would sound like on a keyboard. And I'll tell you why. Because these voltages right here can vary from zero to five volts or zero to whatever volts um, and everything in between. So the oscillator doesn't know what a C or a D is. And this, the sequencer doesn't know it either. So yeah, you can spend forever uh, tuning these notes and there's a trick to do that. So if I take it off sync, uh, so now I can actually skip uh, through, um, through my steps like this. So this is basically our sequence, so I'm just doing this by hand. But why would I do this? Well, if I stop here, I can just completely focus my note here. And let's just st stick this now in the, into the tuner to see what the result of that is. In order to do that, I need to split this signal again uh, so we can actually do this. So I'm going to stick this in a multiple like we've done before and I'm going to stick this one in. Um, and then the output of the oscillator goes in there too. So now we're not only hearing the oscillator, but it's also directly being sent to the tuner so we can check what's going on. So we are at step number one. And if I tune, if I turn the knob up, then we'll see on the tuner that the tuner starts tuning. And we can see whatever note it is. At this point, it's set to almost an F. So let's just try to tune it perfectly on F. Okay, perfectly in F. Let's now go to our next step. This one is set to an E. Let's make this in G. G. Let's go to our next step. Let's make that a C. That is C. Next step, let's make that a B flat. Almost good. Next step. Let's make that an F again. is fine too. Next step. Back to F. And this is an E flat. Okay. Let's see what we got. Okay, let's add the trigger signal back. Okay, I just had to quickly check uh, my uh, uh, signal in Cubase why it was so quiet. Um, so we just tuned the, the sequencer and this is, you know, quite a cumbersome process to be really honest. Um, because you really have to fine tune it and then it's so easy for it to go out of tune again. So there are solutions to help you with that. Now let me show that to you. So the output of this uh, sequencer is actually voltage. Um, 
it doesn't know what it is, I tuned it with the guitar tuner really precise. Now there are tools that can actually help you with that. Um, I'm just gonna pick one right here. <clears throat> and if we go over here, we see the quantizer bank. So this voltage that is coming out of this sequencer is what they call unquantized. So what quantizing is doing is that if the voltage goes to a note that it's supposed to play, the quantizer would then say, you know what? I'm sure you meant to play an F, let's make it an F. And then the voltage can go a little bit over, it would still be an F. But if it's leaning towards the F sharp, the quantizer will say, okay, I know what you want, you want an F sharp. But you could also with the quantizer uh, select certain modes. So you could for instance say, I want the whole scale to be minor. I want the whole scale to be major uh, or any other options that, uh, that you would like. There are also programmable quantizers where you can really go take it to town with all kinds of really sexy scales. So let's now take the output of our oscillator. So it drops back down to, to an uh, C. And let's stick it in there. Are we? Input. Oh, let's stick it in here. Anything can happen when you work with modular synthesis. So actually one of the oscillators that I was using needed to go to the doctor. Um, it wasn't very happy. So I just picked a different oscillator right now. And let's go back to the subject of what we, uh, what we talked about. Um, so what I did right now, instead of like going through every note and just tuning it with the guitar uh, tuner, which is very cumbersome, I can now is say like, I put this output signal into the quantizer, uh, the, the control voltage that comes out of the sequencer is not quantized, which means it's not shifting to a note or forcing it to go by note, and the quantizer will force it to go to the note that you want. So um, I have a few options here available. So let's keep the sequence as it is, um, and let's go to our saw wave. And let's go to the next sequence over. So this is set to zero. So we'll just hear our C. <clears throat> Here is a switch where I can determine what the voltage is that comes out of this uh, socket, what the scale is. So if we go back to this one, you see? Okay, so let's stick this one in here and let's make a different sequence. And then you'll see it will just switch to that uh, next note instead of like going up very smoothly. Um, so we're now at step number one and let's see what happens. Nothing happens. Ah, there it switched. There it switched. So what I just did is that I switched between different scales and you could hear it skipping and the last one almost sounded like an Arabian scale. Um, so this makes it a whole lot easier uh, to uh, program sequences instead of like tuning everything like one by one. Um, so let's go back to our output. So the sequences is running again. Uh, let's assume we're happy with this riff. 
Let's put the sound on. Okay, so let's now do something with this. So, like we discussed last week, this is my only audio that I have at this specific point. So at this point, I'm just gonna run it through a filter. And what filter shall we pick this time? Um, let's pick the state uh, variable filter of synthesizer.com. Let's take its output. Let's go for a low pass filter. And let's stick it into our signal path. And there we have our bass again. Now, another really interesting thing, uh, what we can do is let's take that trigger sequencer again that we used last week, the, the moon se sequencer, and let's go for the sequence that has every note as a trigger. So let's take that one and let's stick that into our envelope generator right here. So. There we see it, it's working. So let's now stick this into our filter and see if we can make something interesting out of that. So let's stick it in right here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, what else can we make it to make it make it fatter? So a trick that I um, usually use, and it's a it's a very well known trick. It's not my little secret or something. Um, is that let's copy a few of these oscillators to make it thicker. Um, so let's hook up a mixer. So let's see that I did wrong. This thing is supposed to go there. And this is now going signal input, and this is now going here. Let's see. There we go. So what I'm going to do right now is let's take another oscillator, set the pitch the same, and let's hook that one up. So, what is now wrong? I'll tell you what is wrong. One oscillator is actually receiving the info from the sequencer to, to determine what note is being played. The other one is just straight and is not receiving anything. So, in order to do that, we use the same trick as we did before. We stick this into a multiple. Now we have four signals that can go somewhere else. And let's provide these two oscillators twice with the control voltage. So one goes to one, and one goes to the other. So now we have two oscillators slightly detuned that are playing the same note. But why stop at one? Let's add some more. <clears throat> let's take this puppy right here. And let's now... We'll 
Gonna give that same information here. So I'm gonna add an octave below now to our original riff. So this is what we had. So, what I want to do right now is um, a little cheeky um, because you need a lot of real estate to do this uh, properly, uh, but I'm going to do it anyway. So, I'm going to take my output and I'm going to throw it into a different mixer, a stereo mixer right here. So, one goes in one channel and the outputs are going to Cubase. At this point, we're pretty much hearing the bass only on one side, but that I'm gonna fix because what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna patch something similar as this again um, to make a signal on the right side, but with slightly different settings to create something that's really fat. So, in order to do that, I need to do a few things. For starters, I need to make sure that my original sequence information I mean the notes that are being played. That I have enough multiples available with that signal so I can patch it to multiple different uh, uh, oscillators. So I'm gonna copy it a few times just to make sure that I have enough of that. So what oscillators do we have at our disposal that could help us out with that? Um, I'm just gonna switch this off for a second. We know what that is. Um, let's see. I'm gonna take. Um, let's take two oscillators made by Corsint, which are really great oscillators. Uh, let's start with those two. So I'm just gonna hook those up. Oscillator one, and we're gonna take that same saw wave. Oscillator two. At this point, I'll guarantee you it's gonna sound terrible and out of tune. But we'll fix that. We know how to fix that by now. <coughs> and take the output, stick it into the right mixer. And with a little bit of luck. Well, that's not what we want. So let's tune these puppies. <coughs> Again, we go into the tuner, take the output. So that's the C now. Again, I'm noticing something in this part of the rig. Um, I have to check this out. I think there's something wrong with the power supply on this side of the rig. Um, so I'm just gonna skip these oscillators um, and I'm gonna pick something else. Because it can be that I just tried these two in a break when we paused um, that they were not uh, sounding right. It sounds like there's a, there's a power issue going on within the rig. So I'm just gonna take uh, two, a few oscillators from this side 
Um, we'll see if that sounds fine. So let's stick them in our mixer here. Saw wave. Saw wave. Let's copy the settings. 16, 16. Okay. Let's not forget to add our control voltage to this thing so it starts playing notes. But for this we need to use an auto multiple because otherwise I can't reach it. So we just copied. Oh, this is very long. Let's not use that. Let's copy a similar thing for a filter. So let's take this output. Now let's use uh, this one. We're using the synthesizer.com filter right there. And we're just going to use this filter on this side. Now in order to let it do the same thing, this thing, I also want to make sure that I copy my gate signal that is actually doing that on this on this filter. So again, also this goes into a multiple. So if we now play this original bass line, you see that we've lost that thumping effect that it uh, that it had before, because now I'm doubling that gate info, and I'm just going to stick it in here, and we get it back. There we go. Now let's see if we can make the right channel do the same thing. So I'm just sticking this control info in here. There we go. We need one more oscillator. Cable too short, get a longer one.
So, okay, we achieved it. And what you can see also is that how incredibly different these two filters sound from one another. It's really hard to match them up. So usually uh, I try to use the same filter as well for the left as for the right. Um, and I have one available that's uh, sitting on that side, but that doesn't matter. Um, but so what we did uh, in this episode with a lot of technical hiccups, but that's, uh, that's part of it, um, is that we now learned how to use them the sequencer right here with control voltage, we added a quantizer to it so we got more precise our notes. We used multiples to copy signals and move them around. We used a gate signal that was um, um, triggered by this gate sequencer and we turned it into an envelope generator that is now controlling the two different filters. And we saw how, how if we take six um, um, oscillators, how we can really create a really fat sound. Three go to the left side and the other three go to the right side to create, you know, like a really big sounding sound. So let's just listen to it one more time and play a little bit with the filters. Okay, that was that for this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next week.